out here today in Houston, Texas. We're gonna be heading into the Johnson Space Center out here in Houston. Let's go inside and see what we can see. So as you're stepping up to the Johnson Space Center, one of the first things that you see as you're stepping up is Independence Plaza. The shuttle on top is actually a replica of the Independence and it is mounted on top of an actual NASA 905 shuttle carrier aircraft. I actually didn't know this when uh, we were going through it. I actually thought it was a real shuttle when I was going up in there and looking around because it was that accurate when I was up inside of there. You would not be able to tell me that, that that wasn't a real space shuttle. And you can see as we step in here, this is the main space that you see when you first come into Johnson Space Center and they've definitely changed it a bit from the last time that I've been here. I think it was about six or seven years ago that I came last time. One of the coolest things that stood out to me that I think I must have missed last time that I came is that you can see here is a Mars rock. You can actually touch a rock from Mars. That is the coolest thing. I remember as a kid, the coolest thing here was touching the moon rock, but now the coolest thing is touching a rock from Mars. And then of course you have all kinds of artifacts of replicas that are strewn about right here in this main area. You can also see here what all the astronauts look like inside the capsule. There was a lot of cool stuff to see. If I wasn't with my daughter and her friends. I probably would have stopped at each and everything and read every single plaque and would have dived in and been here extra long, probably wouldn't have been able to do everything but because I'm just very curious and I like to read everything when I go to a museum. As you can see, there's already so much that you can stop and see before you even go on a tour. Highly suggest that you take your time with it. Go as soon as they open. Honestly, that's the best way to do it. Go as soon as they open, stay until they close. Make sure that you see everything. We then eventually took a break and went to the food court. If you want an idea of what the food prices were like, think theme park. That's gonna go for a gift shop. That's gonna go for food that's gonna go for drinks that's gonna go for treats anything there that costs money think theme park the cheapest part about your whole trip to the space center is the ticket getting in then also included with the ticket no extra price is the rocket park tour honestly one of the coolest tours just to see the saturn 5 rocket that's going to be one of your highlights here on the visit this thing is absolutely massive if you've never been here and you've never seen this thing before oh boy are you in for a treat and i gotta tell you the video that you're going to be seeing of this rocket doesn't do it any justice whatsoever and then as you can see you do get in line the amount of time that you wait depends on when you go you go on a weekend of course it's going to be very long again think theme park you go during the week go on a monday it's not there's not going to be a ton of people you go on a weekend there's gonna be a long line. You're gonna be waiting a little bit to get on those trams. That's just how it is. But once you get on the tram, they take you over to Rocket Park. You are greeted with a couple rockets before you head into the building to see Saturn V. And what you're seeing right here in front of you is the Little Joe 2 was used from 1963 to 1966 for five uncrewed tests of the Apollo spacecraft launch escape system, command module parachute recovery system, and to verify the performance of the command module parachute recovery system in abort mode, whatever that means. <laughs> really cool though. Awesome, a huge piece of history out here. I'm really surprised that it's out here being exposed to the elements. It worries me a little bit. I would assume that NASA is probably knows what they're doing with it. I'm, I'm sure that the rocket is fine. I don't think it's deteriorating. I really hope not. And then the second rocket that you're seeing right here is the Mercury Redstone rocket. It actually launched the first American astronaut, Alan Shepard, believe it or not, right into space during the Mercury program. So another piece of NASA history on full display before you even see one of the coolest things that NASA has to offer, the Saturn V. My absolute favorite thing out of anything at NASA. And I would think to bet that it probably will be the coolest thing that you see if you go. Be prepared to take more pictures on the inside as you step into the Saturn V building to see none other than Saturn V. With a height of 363 feet, well, I guess now a length, since as you can see, it's on its side, this thing is absolutely massive. This thing, when it's fully fueled, actually comes in at 6.5 million pounds. This thing was actually built in three stages. The first stage was built by Boeing. The second stage was built by North American Aviation. And the third stage was built by Douglas Aircraft Company, as well as the instrumentation unit built by IBM. The Saturn V rocket was actually used to launch Apollo astronauts to the moon and deliver Skylab, which is the first US space station. The rocket was operational from 19 1967 to 1973, and it had a total of 13 launches. The maximum speed of this rocket, 24,500 miles per hour. It had three very notable missions, one of them being the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, which was the first moon landing mission. So this thing is 
very historic, as well as the Apollo 8 mission in 1968, which is the first crewed mission to orbit the moon, and then the delivery of the Skylab in 1973, launching the first US space station. Of course, that's just three of the notable missions. It did have many other missions as well. Then you get back on the tram and they drop you off over there by the airplane and shuttle replica. You head right under and you can either go upstairs into that replica or you can beeline it, take a right and go back into the building. It's your choice. We did go back inside for a brief break because we actually had another tour already coming up right after this. So in the middle of that break, we decided to grab some astronaut ice cream sandwiches because my daughter really wanted one of those. Actually, it was probably the main thing that she was looking forward to on the whole trip. So obviously we did grab that and she tried that, opened it up and she took the first bite and she absolutely loved it, as you can see. I was really surprised about how good it was myself. Really shocking. I could probably eat like 10 of these and not be full, which is insane. But most of that is because these things are like completely dehydrated. So I'd assume that you could probably pack quite a few of these things in before you really get full. Of course, a little overpriced theme park prices. Like I said, I think uh, this ice cream sandwich was about $8, but you can get them on Amazon for about $3.50. Not too much of a markup, but still a little pricey for an ice cream sandwich. I know it's freeze dry, but dang. And then we headed back out into the same line that we took earlier onto the trams, waited in line, got on, headed back the same way past Rocket Park where Saturn V was and went way deeper into the facility than you could ever imagine as we headed into the training facility where the astronauts will train. This place is actually a habitat for a lot of wildlife, believe it or not, which I thought was super cool. You can see a bunch of deer just kind of hanging out in there. That was really awesome to see. I was not expecting that. And the tram rolls you right up to that training facility and everybody just heads in in no particular like form or fashion, kind of guide you up the stairs. And then they also have an elevator option for those that cannot go up the stairs, which I think is really great. And then you're greeted with the massiveness that is the training facility and you can see there is just so much to see and so little for me to understand. It is a guided tour so there is somebody telling you about everything that is going on here but honestly I was just kind of mesmerized by everything. I wasn't quite paying attention to what the uh, person was saying over the intercom and that's my fault. I do get very distracted. I have ADHD but just so much like NASA awesomeness in here and it just seems like there's just so many different projects and things going on inside of here as you can see they do have things for the artemis 3 mission on full display which is going to be a crew of four returning to the moon in uh 2027 i believe see the word artemis printed alongside johnson space center and nasa kind of all over the place wherever the logos land so one of the coolest things that could be happening on this mission is that they will be landing the first woman and first person of color on the moon they will be conducting scientific studies including sampling water and ice i believe they will also be pre-positioning equipment on the moon's surface including a rover so really cool that we're returning to the moon i'm really excited about that there's a lot of cool stuff going on with nasa as of recent and then they put you back on the tram and then take you right back to where you started and then when they took us back to the main part of the johnson space center one of the first things that we did was check out the starship gallery and one of the main things about the starship gallery is that they showcase the evolution of human space travel got a ton of things to see as far as spacecraft artifacts interactive displays just get to see the evolution of nasa from the old days to the modern times absolutely a ton of stuff to see they also house the lunar sample vaults where it's going to be the only place here where you can touch a rock from the moon and for some people this is the main reason why they come to the johnson space center is because they want to do this and of course what would a visit to the space center be if we did it touch the moon rock of course we did that it was very fun but afterwards we did use some hand sanitizer because you got to imagine how many hands are touching that thing all day long and it is the flu season so you got to keep out for that probably a good idea if you use hand sanitizer but still super cool of a thing that you get to do i really love that the fact that you could touch a rock from mars and a rock from the moon is super awesome. They also have other things regarding minerals and things from the moon and how they've tested them. And then you get to see some lunar soil, which honestly I would have rather have touched the lunar soil. Like that would have been way cooler of an experience, but obviously I'm sure that sand would dissipate so fast and this stuff probably costs millions of dollars on its own. But this place has artifacts and stuff just strewn about all over the place. There's so much to see. This is definitely one of my favorite areas here at Johnson Space Center outside of this 
Saturn V rocket. And then obviously as one of the second to last things that we did here was head up to go into the replica shuttle on top of that Boeing plane. There's two options. You could take the stairs or the elevator. We opted for the elevator because I had some kids with us. In my opinion, the best way to do this one is to just take the elevator all the way up and then work your way down to the bottom using the stairs. And then of course, if you go to the top, you go into the shuttle replica. And at the time I did not know that this was a replica. I thought it was 100% real. You definitely could have fooled me. Actually, NASA, you did fool me. I thought it was real, but because I had a child and I didn't have time to do enough reading while I was there, I was convinced that it was a real shuttle. And I told my daughter that it was. I'm sure no harm, no foul there. I think uh, she was fully convinced that it was real and I probably won't tell her otherwise. But honestly, still as a replica, really cool. This definitely adds to your experience. But then once you're done up there in the shuttle, you do head down into the Boeing aircraft that was actually used to uh, put rockets into the sky. Heading into this aircraft was actually my daughter's favorite part, I think about the whole trip. <laughs> I think she just likes airplanes more than anything, but I was happy that she enjoyed it, honestly. So this is actually a Boeing 747 and this thing flew in the skies before Boeing was like a big issue like it is right now. This is back when Boeing was a lot more trusted. So this is a NASA 905 airplane. It carried space shuttles like the Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor between locations. This airplane, believe it or not, was operational from 1974 to 2012, where it was retired over here to the Johnson Space Center. But obviously, as you can see, there is a full out museum just going on inside of the airplane. It's very hollowed out in there so you can definitely walk around and see all the displays and interactive stuff that they have for the kids and a lot of things to read there for the adults having kids you're probably not going to have a lot of time to actually read those displays my suggestion come back on your own as an adult or with other adults and take your time here i definitely think you can have two different kinds of experiences here but of course i fault nobody if you go here and you don't read any of the plaques and you go "Ooh, i definitely i get it 100%. Then after we were done with all that, we headed to go back into the Starship Gallery because we did miss the Skylab trainer on the inside. This is actually a full scale training mock-up of the actual Skylab. It was the thing that the astronauts used to train in, hence is the name training. It was used by the astronauts to prepare for their missions aboard the Skylab. Up close and personal look of how astronauts lived inside of there and what they had to go through and navigate living inside of the Skylab. And it's super cool, so much to see inside of here. Again, if you took your time, you could probably be inside of that Skylab for like a good 30 minutes or so. But it was so many people there on a Saturday, you definitely feel like you want to like, move a little quick just so everybody can get some time in there to see it. But uh, if you do want to like take your time to like see a lot of this stuff, I would highly suggest to come on a weekday. Don't go on the weekend. Weekends for the kids. The weekdays are for the adults. For sure, do not skip out on this. Then peeked at a few other things inside the Starship Gallery. Some of the evolution of the food that was on some of the space missions, as well as a bunch of other really cool artifacts that I think that you should definitely take some time to read, but still was really awesome to just to be in the presence of so many of these artifacts. Seeing one of these Omega Speedmasters was one of the coolest things that I had seen in there. Other interesting thing was a display of this Hawaiian shirt that was actually used on a space mission. I'm sure there's just so much more of a story going on there, but with like such a crunch in time, we could just had to breeze by through everything. But as you can see, there is just so much to see at the Johnson Space Center. If you're considering going, stop considering it's worth it. Believe me, it is worth it. But then we headed out and then we beelined it again for the gift shop. Of course, when you have children, the gift shop is like a must do. But they do have some cool things to see. As you can see, this infinite mirror thing I thought was really awesome. It's probably one of the biggest versions of that sort of thing that I've ever seen. I'm surprised that my daughter wasn't more interested in it than I was because I think she was done with it as soon as I walked up to it. But really cool, this is definitely the most massive of the gift shops that are there. I think it's only this one and the one by the food court. This one's definitely houses the most expensive merchandise that I've ever seen. As you can see this space collective jacket going for $300, which absolutely gave me sticker shock. Could not believe that that jacket was that expensive. Feeling the material and looking at it, I can't really quite understand why it costs that much money. If you have the money, looks pretty cool. But anyway, that was our trip to the Johnson Space Center. My fifth time going, my daughter's first time. We went with her friends and a buddy of mine 
all went together, was super fun. We definitely enjoyed ourselves on this trip. I definitely do wanna go back, like I was saying, and go back on my own or with a couple of friends uh, without kids and so that we could take our time and just absorb all the plaques and information and things and just really listen to see what everything is and what's going on. But even if you don't read the plaques and you're going with kids, you're wanting to breeze by through everything, you're still gonna enjoy yourself all the same. It's just don't expect to like really understand what you're looking at, but I do think that you will still enjoy the fact that you're looking at it, if that makes any sense. Now, if you want an idea of ticket prices, adults are gonna be roughly $30, kids are gonna be about $25. Children ages three and younger, get them in free. And of course there are senior discounts, 65 plus are gonna be about $28 going in the door. Of course, these are online prices. If you go and actually buy them at the Space Center, all those tickets are gonna increase buy five dollars so you do the math but nowadays who's not buying their tickets online before they go i feel like everybody just does that at this point but again my suggestion is to go as soon as they open at 10 in the morning get there be at the front at 10 depending on which day you go they may close at six and you definitely you want to pack as much time into this place as you possibly can and if you're going and you're planning to like read everything and absorb all the information you definitely want to get there on time but hey if you're just gonna breeze by everything and you're really not gonna read anything you could probably show up at 12 and get away with that also but I, I definitely wouldn't show up any later than that otherwise you might not get there in time to actually see some of the tours we actually got there uh, a little too late to where the historic mission control tour was fully booked for that day so we uh didn't get to see that but i had seen it before so i wasn't disappointed but my friend uh who brought his girls with him was really wanting to see that i think he was disappointed so um if that's one of the things you want to see i would definitely call up ahead of time before your actual trip and see if maybe you can book that ahead of time so that you don't miss that because that might be one of the things that you're really wanting to see when you go but anyway if you liked the video like the video subscribe if you want to see more videos like this but with that being said have a good day